everybody, welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are diving into another top five worst action figure countdown for you guys. And today, we're going to be diving into one of my favorite lines, but they, they have their criticism, Brad. We've seen it. It's all over the place. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about when I talk about them. We're talking about the AEW Unrivaled Collection. Now, you guys are probably wondering where Vindication Episode 17 is, and it's still in the works, man. Again, there's a lot of editing going on right now. I underestimated. I always do that. I underestimated how much editing time would take, so I do apologize for that, but we're full steam ahead, man. Just stay on the lookout. It's coming. It is legitimately like it's right around the corner from it, so stay tuned, man, but today, while we wait on that, we do have to dive into my personal top five worst AEW action figures that Jazzwares has made to this point. Now, there are some honorable mentions, and there are some that you could probably put in here if you wanted to, but right off the top of my head, you know what? You want to get into the honorable, but we'll get into the honorable mentions after I get to uh, I guess after number two. After number two, we'll get into the honorable mentions, but let's go ahead and dive in, man. Starting out with number five. So coming in at number five for me, guys, this is actually kind of shocking, and it, it could probably honestly go in the honorable mentions, but I had to mention it. I honestly feel like this figure is so bad in certain ways that I have to include it in my top five countdown. So coming in at number five is going to be Hangman Adam Page from AEW and Rival Collection Series number five. Could not leave it out, man. It's just, I, I could could not leave it out. I could not leave it off the list. The first thing being, man, like, the figure looks great, right? Aesthetically, it looks fantastic. I would say the head sculpt probably isn't as good as it could have been. Like, some people tell me that they don't like the head sculpt whatsoever, but the attire is great, right? All the different things going on. The only reason it made the list is how god-awful the legs are, man. This figure is ungodly loose. It's it's more loose than any figure I've probably ever seen. It, it is very bad. I can't even imagine using it. I can't even imagine Imagine like having him run down a ramp or anything like that, man. When you get into this figure, you know what I'm talking about. At first glance, like you probably can't tell, but like look at this. I'm barely even, I'm barely even grasping. I'm barely even grasping. I can't even, if you were to like, like just good God in heaven. And look how beautiful, like it looks beautiful, man. It's a, it's a terrific looking specimen, right? It looks fantastic. You got the face cover, the vest, the belt, the long tights, hangman. Beautiful looking figure. But I wanna, I wanna literally slap myself with a fruity pebbles box. It looks god awful. It gets. It's god-awful. Very frustrating figure, man. Hangman had to come in at number five, man. I could not not have him on the list. Anybody that owns that figure, I guarantee you it's just as loose, and it's practically unusable. Coming in into the number four spot, guys, I'm going with the Series 2 Dustin Rhodes. Now, honestly, the figure isn't the worst. Like, like aesthetically, not that bad. Like, it doesn't look bad. I think that, first of all, that's the version that they made, like, eight foot nine. You know, he, like, towered over everybody, and you had to do the adjustment. And it's, it's kind of like Moxley, but Moxley Series 2 is actually really nice, and the gear from Series 5 is really nice, and his posing's not bad. Dustin's posing is not very good, man. If you've used that figure, if you pose it around, the torso's very hard to pose. He's very long. His feet are also pretty small, and I think the ankles get really, really loose. At least mine has gotten loose when I'm posing it around. Torso's not very posable. He's 9 foot 7, and uh, yeah, man, it's just one of those figures that is just not fun, and also, like, I don't know, the head sculpt's very, I don't know, it just kind of looks flat for me. There's no texture in the head. It's just like a yellow painted on deal for his blonde hair. I don't know. It's just not the most exciting release. This could have been so much better and the re-release or the unmatched repaint, the unmatched series one is a lot better figure. I would say it looks a whole lot better. The head sculpts are better. Details are better and they also adjusted the height on that figure so that's really nice as well but Dustin has to come in at number four for me personally. Diving in at number three man you probably see this figure everywhere you go. It's probably a lot of people's only AEW figure they can find at retail man. I'm talking about series number three, Riho. Now, Riho... The figure isn't, like, terrible, but there are some very, very marquee mistakes about it. It's also a very plain Jane figure, but the head sculpt just doesn't capture the likeness of Riho, at least in my opinion. I don't see Riho. I see, like, it kind of looks like Aubrey Edwards a little bit. It's kind of a very weird head sculpt. I'm not a fan of the head sculpt whatsoever. I think it looks odd. Uh, there's no lower boot rotation on it, and she's also a little bit too big. It's obviously not the best release, and it's honestly not her fault. You know, people, people uh, when they see Riho up on the shelves. If you're not like a pretty big AEW fan or you're not like engaged in the product, you would not like just walk down that. It's not like Chris Jericho or Cody Rhodes or Dustin even, you know, like 
it's not a recognizable face. I don't think a lot of people know who she is, at least at this moment. You know, it's shelf forms everywhere. Kyle Peterson, every toy hunt this man goes on, every little store he goes in, there's like two or three Rehos on the shelf. So, I don't know, man. Just wasn't impressed with it. The lower leg rotation. If it had lower leg rotation and it looked like Reho, it would actually not that be that bad for me. But I'm just not feeling it, man. She is the, uh, I would say she's the third worst on uh, it, that they've made so far. Coming in at number two, man, we are diving into series number six, and I'm going with MJF, man. This figure right here to me, this figure for me, man, was just so boring. And also, the you had the black and gold gear, which is so matte. I like the wrist tape. I like MJF a lot, but it's just such an ugly looking figure. It's very weird in package posing deal going on with this guy. His gear's very boring. Like I said, it was the black and gold. So many different gears they could have chose for him or bright colors they could have chose for him. Also, I feel like the head sculpt like got worse from Series 2. Like Series 2 was a lot better looking. They also changed his skin tone from Series 2. Series 2 skin tone was a lot better in my opinion. It gave it more life, especially with the colored trunks. And the likeness was just better. I don't know what it was. I also forgot to show off the Reho in the last little segment, so that's on me. But you don't want to you don't want to see that, Brad. You don't want to see that. But we're diving into the Series 6 MJF. And I don't know, man. I'm just I'm just not feeling it. I, I don't know. I, I just don't really care for the head sculpt that much. It's a very plain Jane figure. And he's got like that different skin tone going for him. I, I don't know, man. Just wasn't a fan of it. He came in at the worst in the set review when we reviewed Series 6. But I had to include the MJF, man. Had to include it here. And I, I just don't like the release. I thought it was a very weak release. And hopefully the Series 2 on the Unmatched will be a lot better. And hopefully the head sculpt will be better. But MJF Series 6 comes in at number 2 for me. Now as we get into some honorable mentions, man, these are some that barely miss the cut or that have a case to be in your top 5 worst. I wouldn't blame you if you put these in your top 5 worst, but let's go ahead and dive into it, man. Starting out first, I'm going with Frankie Kazarian. That figure is just so plain Jane. It does not have lower leg rotation. Head slightly oversized. He honestly should probably be on the list, but I went with... But I did give him the benefit of the doubt a little bit. He did come with the AEW Tag Team Championship. There was a lot of different things going on with that, but also I didn't think it was fair to really put the, the Series 1 with the pale skin tones into this countdown just because of the different things we were dealing with at the time of those releases and the skin tones and stuff like that, so I didn't want to include those. I didn't think that would have been fair. So Frankie Kazarian is an honorable mention. Another honorable mention for me is going to be the Matt Hardy figure. Like, if you had that at number 5, I wouldn't doubt you. He's a little bit too tall there, head slightly oversized again. Not a horrific deal, but I could see why you would probably put him in your top 5. And then one that may shock you, bro, I'm going with Luchasaurus. Now, the figure looks absolutely fantastic. You guys know that I love Luchasaurus. I love the figure and the way it looks. But the tassels on the back of the knee pads make it where he can't even do a double-jointed knee. He doesn't have lower leg rotation. His legs get really loose, and he's very, very hard to pose. And it was such a disappointment for me, man. That figure was so damn good. I was so excited for it. It looks so great, but it has a ton of problems, and I don't even know how the hell I'm supposed to use it on MDT Live. Like, oh my god in heaven, not looking forward to that, but we'll see how, you know, how all that goes. But maybe I'll just have to get in the lab and get better, you know. But I had to include Luchasaurus in my honorable mentions. And the last honorable mention, guys, is going to be Jake Hager. I can see why a lot of people would, why, you know, you wouldn't like like that you got the reddish beard over the blonde like it doesn't that's not his hair color and then you have the stainage on the figure but uh, at the end of the day I really like the Jake Hager I think he came in at number four in my series six ranking but yeah I had to include Jake Hager I know a lot of people don't like that figure so there you go and coming in at the number one spot for me ladies and gentlemen is going to be none other than series three unrivaled Pac this figure right here I don't know what it is now I did head swap mine because the head sculpt was so god awful I did head swap mine with the elite 55 Neville and it does look a lot better. I just think the figure isn't attractive whatsoever. Like, it's this torso is, like, a little bit too pudgy for me. Like, it's probably a little bit too... It's pretty realistic and everything like that. I just don't know, man. It just doesn't work for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just... I know Mattel, like, sometimes they overjack people and maybe they're a little bit too cut, but I feel like the Mattel ones fit better for a standard figure. It's more aesthetically pleasing. This one uh, is not doing that for me. I think they could have went leaner with it. He doesn't have lower leg rotation again. A lot of people love this figure. Like, some people say this is one of their favorite figures to pose around and stuff. I'm not in that company, Brad. I am not there with you. I feel like uh, there's a lot better figures here, and I just think aesthetically this figure is just not pleasing to look at. The head sculpt isn't very good. A lot of people thought the head sculpt looked like different actors and people of that nature, so no doubt about it, man. Pot comes in at the number one spot for me. It's not even it's not even a thing. Maybe one day.
day somebody could could overthrow Pac as the worst AEW figure, at least to me, but uh, yeah, man. That does it for my top five worst AEW action figures ever made. But anyways, guys, that pretty much wraps up our video for today. Had a ton of fun making the countdowns. Again, I love the countdowns, man. I love rankings and countdowns and all of that. If you guys want to see the return of the WWE Elite action figure rankings, maybe we can get one of those done very soon. I do enjoy doing those videos, but I didn't know if you guys were enjoying the series or not, so you guys can let me know down in the comment section below, man. But thank you guys so very much for watching. Vindication 17 coming soon, man. Can't wait for you guys to see it. A lot of great editing and great things going on there, so we'll have to wait and see how what comes of it and all those different things, man. But thank you guys so very much for watching. Let me know what your favorite and least favorite AEW figures are, which one you think is the worst down in the comment section below. I'm getting out of here, guys. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you, and don't cross the line like all these effing figures on this freaking list. You cross the line, I've been beat.